this one time i think i was standing in for somebody and then i made a joke like entering the frame or something and then this guy said maybe we should get someone who looks better <laughs> It's either that or he said, maybe we should get someone with less pimples. And I was like, the wonderful, beautiful podcast. Hello, my name is Angel. This is the Wonderful Beautiful Podcast. I realized I should probably be introducing myself instead of assuming that anybody would just be receptive to getting advice or a sermon from an unknown dumb bitch. So. <laughs> This entire thing was because I am a person who literally moves on from nothing. I've never moved on from anything in my life. And I could probably list down all the times anybody has ever said anything mean to me. Especially if it's about my looks. Like, I can name them all, I could write them down, I could send them as a letter to Satan so that when in the afterlife somebody's gonna be like, Hey, remember when you said this to Angel? She remembers. And I understand, Angel, you need to move on sometimes. But if I moved on, then this podcast wouldn't have been possible because I remember this one specific dude who I idiotically uh, dated. <laughs> I think, I don't know what the context was, how I got this information even. All I know is it was said about me and then I never moved on from it. Or maybe I kind of did. I do forget about it. And this specific dude said to one of my friends, I think, was that he didn't like me because I had big open pores. But then he still ended up being with me, so... <laughs> I understand that I wasn't like oppressed or like I wasn't like bullied or whatever. Like uh, people weren't digging their nails or just doing any everything and anything they can just to insult me. That's not, the, you know, that's, that, I'm not, I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is, is that I was not, like I, I took very hard every time. Like I literally listed it down at some point and I was like, this is shit I need to change about myself or there's things I need to improve about myself. And I think I also took it very hard because as a kid, I was also a very pretty child. And okay, you can agree to disagree. Let me put up some photos. Like there, there are cute kids and there are also like pretty kids. And I, I, I feel like I was either a pretty kid or tricked into thinking I was because it was like every time I would greet like a, a relative or like a tita or like a friend and be like, oh my god, Angel, you're so pretty, you're such a cute little kid, you're so, yeah, you're, you're like a doll, you look like a manika. Manika is like doll in Tagalog. And then I'd be like, oh, thank you. Because <laughs> I was just like this white kid oh my mom would also like tell me that i'm snow white and that's really problematic by the way that's so colonial mentality but at that time i didn't think that it was a big deal or i, I didn't i thought it was just normal to call kids that to you know keep pertaining to kids as pretty as if it's like a norm i guess or if it's it's like a requirement um for you to call kids that but the moment it stopped i knew like the moment i hit puberty or the pre-pubescent age like puberty hit me like a bus like a an ugly fucking bus like like not in a way that ah puberty hit her like a bus like in a good way like it was like a bad way like i remember um i was 13 years old everybody around me already had their period and i didn't like i was i was having breakouts like at 10 years old if you guys didn't know i had po i have polycystic ovarian syndrome so it's like hormonal imbalance and all that shit so um i had such terribly oily skin i had acne all over it i was still so young like i looked so awkward and like literally my sister told me it's okay angel you're just in your and you're just in your awkward ugly stage and i was like what do you mean i'm ugly right now and it was like ruined like i felt like my life was ruined uh, like i had like a mustache i had like, my eyebrows were like terrible like i had overgrowth of hair like there were hair in places i wish there weren't any, there there weren't any you know they're like typical things like my face was inflamed like it was just bad and then like in, in terms of like curves like when everybody in high school started having like big titties <laughs> not big titties but like when people started like having curves i had none some people had curves i had angles <laughs> so that's what i was dealing with and I, I just felt so insanely insecure and anytime like somebody would say something relatively mean to me i would go to the bathroom and just cry like i know like oh my god angel you're so vain but i don't give a shit okay because i think i am i am happy that i grew up ugly at that time i was like why can't my mom just support me and just take me to the fucking dermatologist <laughs> but like no like it did it wasn't a priority my face wasn't a priority and like you know it wasn't a big deal it shouldn't have been a big deal but it was a big deal to me and it felt like 
my world was going through a landslide. And I know that that's like a thing that a lot of, you know, some of the people who subscribe to me, some people like my, my friends here on this channel, um, like to talk about. I see your DMs and you guys talk about like, what do I do about my skin? Like, I feel so fat. I have like body dysmorphia. And there's, I, I feel like we really shouldn't minimize like those feelings of insecurity. No, like even if you're so confident and you think you're so, um, you know, like you think that that's so shallow for people to worry about, it's different for everybody, okay? Let's not be bitches to other people here. <laughs> So that being said, I know in myself that there was a point in my life where I genuinely felt absolutely hideous. And I know this because I put a lot of my self-worth into boys. Like, I don't know if you've noticed already, but I was a child who is just malande. <laughs> There's no other term I would use, but I was just very malande. And I, if you don't know what Filipino means, what, what malande means, to me, it's like, a, I don't want to call it a flirt, but I was just like, I like boy attention. It was a problem. And even when I was a kid, like, I would list down all the boys who had a crush on me. That's how narcissistic I was. Like, I, I don't know. I even, like, made categories. Like, I was like a full on ex. Excel sheet before spreadsheets were a thing that I knew how to use. I even categorized them. Sure, not sure, definitely likes me. <laughs> but anyway, that's not the point. And then at that time, I I was in grade school and there was this guy. He was like the crush on Bayan, the heartthrob. Oh my god, if he's like watching this, I hope your ego doesn't burst into flames right now. He's gonna think I'm obsessed with him. I'm not obsessed with you. Or maybe I am. I don't move on from anything. No, I'm not. I'm not. But it's just things that I one of the things that I shadow worked upon myself so when i was a kid everybody would say that oh my god you're you're so pretty to catch this guy's attention you're so amazing like your your hair is so haba haba my hair mo, and all that shit you know when you were a kid like the way you perceive beauty or the way it's been like projected onto you whether or not you were told that you were an ugly piece of shit or if you were beautiful or it wasn't something that you cared about until like, I don't know, like when you were in high school or something. It affects you. And I think at that time when I gained the approval of this popular guy, like it shocked me so much and it just boosted my self-esteem and my ego. The thing is, he didn't even know shit about me. Like he just, he just found me pretty. <laughs> and then doesn't know anything about me. Other than that, I remember every first day of school, like, I just sound like I'm hum humble bragging right now, I swear to God, I have a point. But like, every like first day of school, my mom would be like, okay, so are you a class officer? Are you a muse? Are you the muse? And I'm like, um, yeah, or something like, sometimes I'd say, yeah, like, I I, I, I didn't know what it meant when you were the muse, but apparently um, I later found out that being a muse means you're pretty. And then this one time, I remember in third grade, I think, uh, my mom, like I came home from the first day of school and she was like, so are you the muse? Like really excitedly. And then I was like, um, no, but I'm the treasurer. And then she was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and that carried on until high school. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm the vice president. And then she's like, oh, you guys don't have like muse and escorts anymore. You don't have that anymore. <laughs> No, we don't. <laughs> but since my entire self-worth like completely was just hinged on my looks, the moment somebody insulted my looks, I would be absolutely devastated. I remember in ninth grade, I know his name. I'm not gonna say his name for maybe I'll just call him Ethel. His name is Ethel. Ethel's watching this. He probably doesn't even fucking remember. But I was carrying that group. It was like some kind of shoot, like a like a video film shoot. I never really acted for like film shoots because usually the people who act are like attractive people <laughs> and at the same time I was also shy I felt like very insecure and I was also a control freak I did not trust anybody else behind that camera nobody like nobody I needed to be on top of my shit so this one time I think I was standing in for somebody and then I made a joke like I made a joke of like entering the frame or something and then this guy said maybe we should get someone who looks better <laughs> It's either that or he said, maybe we should get someone with less pimples. And I was like, take me to the nearest building. I'm going to jump out. 
of it. And there was also this guy. Okay, I just remembered it now, but like, just so you know that I had like bad acne when I was in high school, there was this one guy, I literally just crossed, like it's always men who do this by the way. I mean, there are other girls who do it, but like, there, there's these men who are just like, like, what is wrong with you? Like, you're, you're ugly as fuck. Like, you have no right to be talking right now. But like, I literally walked past him in the hallway and then he goes, I want to say it Tagalog, so I'll just say it in Tagalog and I'll just translate it. He goes, Bilangin natin yung people's my intent. One, two, three, four, five, infinity! <laughs> What the fuck is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Get a life. Get a life. That's fatherless, motherless behavior. <laughs> um, I went into that bathroom and I was just like, <laughs> why? <laughs> but anyway, back to the main story where we, we were in a shoot and then somebody literally just insinuated that we, we should replace me with somebody more attractive. For one, Ethel. I was just there to sit in or to stand in so the frame is in focus. Ethel. But <laughs> at that time, I was group mates with my wonderful, beautiful friend, Jillian. We're like shooting outside somebody's house and then I went back into that house and, and Jillian was there, I think? Or I think I asked her to come with me inside? I don't remember, but I just remember being in somebody's house and somebody else's kitchen and I was just like crying to her. And then she was like, that's mean. Like, he shouldn't have said that. It's so rude. And then, he, and then she was just comforting comforting me and being very nice and I even if I don't know if she remembers it she probably does because she's a great person but I remember it and it just it meant so much to me you know to have like a little girly pop with me just being nice to each other you know and not like or like supporting somebody and then like literally shit talking somebody else who said something mean, you know, to have that. All I'm saying, I guess, is that being ugly growing up, although I do believe maybe I wasn't even ugly, like I just look back at it and I know that I I know how to take care of myself more now, but like the awkwardness of puberty and the awkwardness of feeling ugly and having people say mean shit to you and teenagers just being absolutely rude because they i don't know i don't know i don't know maybe their parents never taught them how to be good people <laughs> or um maybe they're they're just bad at being se being sensitive or they think that they can just say rude stuff to people and i know that there are others who have experienced much worse like people who have actually been bullied i wasn't bullied i still had friends i didn't want to k-word myself or any well i kind of did but you know <laughs> It wasn't that bad. I know there are other people who had it much, much, much worse. But that just was a humbling experience. And I, I always think to myself, like anytime I see someone who has been attractive all throughout their lives, I do not trust them. If they were attractive all throughout their lives or they don't have like something to humble them, then they're probably an asshole <laughs> or not, who knows? But I'm grateful for it in a way that it, it really did humble me. And you know, I didn't grow bitter. Well, maybe I did. Well, judging from the way I'm I'm talking about it in this podcast right now maybe I am bitter <laughs> but I wasn't bitter in a way that oh I want to hurt other people back now I think I just really I've always avoided being rude especially about somebody's looks because it's something that nobody no like they can't change it in like five seconds you can tell me that I have like ketchup or bagoong in my face or something that's fine because I can wipe it away but if you tell somebody oh um you should lose weight you can't do that in like five seconds it's not easy it's not you know that's probably something that people like the person itself is already like very much well aware of I see myself you see your reflection every single day in front of the mirror every day if there's some kind of flaw that you noticed with someone they know it too there's no reason for you to point it out and be an asshole absolutely no reason and i think i've always just been so angered when i hear other people insulting somebody's looks and i always say that and like i know in myself i'm still guilty of it i'm not perfect like i know that there's times where you know i've been rude to somebody maybe it's because they were rude beforehand so i'm only gonna you know if you can't take it then don't start it <laughs> But I would, I, I don't think I would ever start, you know, being an, like, insulting somebody's looks in front of them. Uh, anyways, but that's besides the point. All I'm saying is, I've always been like, why would you say that? Let's say with acne, okay? I feel like 
throughout like i guess my batch i don't know maybe i'm just delusional but i feel like there are times where i suffer from it a lot and then my skin would clear up because i would take like some kind of like temporary solution to it i didn't know how to treat it from the root or whatever but i would have a flare up and you know it would be really really bad and made me want to cry and all that stuff and then would clear up and then at the time when my face was clear and it would be nice i would see other people insulting somebody else who has like bad skin and then i would think don't say that like even if they they would say that oh it's fine i'm not hurt i'm used to it i know that it's a problem that i have and, and i'd be like no like no <laughs> you are not supposed to take that from other people you're not supposed to let other people say that stuff to you like no I, I would always just be like don't ever say that shit don't ever take that shit from anyone like you know one thing that I I know one thing that I try my best to practice even though I know I'm like not that good at it yet but one thing I try to practice is when somebody says something rude to you like they comment on your weight on your hair on your status in life on your grades is try your best not to laugh it off because i feel like i've laughed off so much like harassment even or just even like harassment like sexual harassment there are times where you just laugh it off pretend it didn't even happen stop laughing it off because you dictate what other people get to laugh at and it's not gonna be you boo <laughs> you should not be the butt of the joke that that's bullshit <gasps> it pisses me off too, so bad but anyway i feel like it did make me more empathetic because of that i guess vain at the same time people have such a bad perception of the word vain i don't know i don't really like the word vain because it sounds like it sounds bad or it sounds shallow i always got annoyed that it was used as an insult i guess because sometimes it's not even it shouldn't be that demonized just in my point of view like vanity shouldn't be demonized i don't know like maybe there's a different word for vanity but i remember like it being in the seven deadly sin like being vain is bad and i was just like why <laughs> I, there's like mirrors that you call a vanity is that bad i don't know since i did put like a lot of my self-worth on looks and i tried my best to like i guess improve what i what i look like i wanted to change so much stuff and i was a high schooler or i was a grade schooler and i was or he, he i didn't have any money for that i remember like slapping on a bunch of random bullshit on my face like i would put like random creams oh my god there's even a time like because i didn't know i didn't know how to shave my my armpits i didn't know how to shave my arms or my my, my legs I, now i don't do that because i don't fucking feel the need to but i remember when i was in school and there would be like a special occasion or something or i had to like perform like even though absolutely no one was gonna look at my legs i would put on this like leg makeup it was insane like why was i putting on leg makeup <laughs> it makes no sense i was like fucking six years old and i was conscious about my legs like that's both a me problem and a society problem i will not just solely blame myself on this but i just remember slapping a bunch of shit on and i didn't know what i was doing at all and the only thing i had access to was like the internet because I couldn't like go out to the mall to buy stuff. I wasn't allowed to do that. There was no like Shopee. There was no Lazada I couldn't buy from the internet. And I didn't understand a lot of things. And in my head, I was just being neglected because nobody was buying me skincare or nobody was doing this and that for me. So I just experimented and put on some nine-year-old foundation when I was super young and my skin probably didn't even like that either. At that time, I just watched videos. Like I remember just watching youtube videos like michelle fawn and i am a little grateful for it because even though it did come from a very insecure place now in my group of friends i'm the one they come to for when they need their makeup done for their debut or for a party or for something or i'm the one that they ask advice for if they want products or if they want this like which one should i buy which one should i get which one looks better on me and there are even people who i even have like girlfriends who would say um that they're they've become more in touch with their feminine side or they've become more accepting of their feminine side because of me i taught them how to embrace like embrace being a girly girl and it's just it's it feels absolutely fantastic fantastic she would say it as a joke but she'd be like i blame you i'm turning to a basic bitch because of you and that's not even being a basic bitch that's just called like being able to express yourself through you know feminine things like makeup and fashion and all that shit and that shouldn't even be feminine things 
things. Like men can very much get into that stuff. People appreciate when men get into that stuff. But as I was saying, well, the whole reason why I even like came up with this podcast is because I was scrolling through Facebook and I was on the internet for a very long time. I was in there since I was like seven. I think I made my Facebook when I was like seven years old and I was posting pictures on there and people were tagging me on photos and Facebook loves to do this thing where they recap like memories and the old cringy photos you have and I have a bunch of those terrible old photos and it's not me who posted them it was like a classmate who posted them and so like I saw a lot of it and can I just say I know I already showed a photo like I know you already see it in the thumbnail because I'm probably gonna put it in the thumbnail but like oh my god when I saw it I was like Why I, see him? <laughs> I think one of the things that also really affects people's self-esteem is the internet and I don't think we can deny that. I was very much exposed to the internet. It was like when the internet was still worming its way into our lives. So it was a time when people were getting, people in my batch were getting 100 plus likes for the first time and everybody was like, oh my god, she has more than 100 likes in Facebook with her fucking Retrica filter. <laughs> There's also like more, I think this is when more like influencers or more content creators were at and they were telling us that you can do this if you want to fix this, you can put on makeup, you can put on blush, you can put on this one. And then I was also exposed to all the other, you know, women I knew in my life and how they portray themselves on social media. And I was like, I know that they don't look like that 24 seven, but it's not like I can, you know, observe their face like in real life. I'm not going to stare at them the whole time or something all i can do is like look at these pictures and think how can i be more like them or how can i look you know better the internet has has become like i think a breeding ground i don't know is that a terrible term what does breeding ground even even mean but all i'm saying is it has become such an environment for comparison like when you keep comparing yourself and you keep like seeing how other people do things you really can't help but mimic them in a way and i very much like not even doesn't even have to be a specific person it could just be like trends and i myself i have followed to so many idiot trends like I think to myself oh that's so cool because everybody's doing it or this person is doing it and she seems cool and he seems cool so I'm gonna do it too <sighs> and then a few years later you look back at it and be like ugh that's kind of ugly <laughs> It was just a trend like for example when i was at the peak of the internet eyebrows were such a thing i think it was like 2017 and everybody was like eyebrows on fleek <laughs> i don't know like i don't know when the last time somebody has heard eyebrows on fleek before but it was such a big deal it's like a kylie jenner bullshit and everybody was like eyebrows on fleek and then everybody was obsessed with eyebrows in high school there were people who would walk into school school to school and then they would have like half a shaven eyebrow and then they had they were it was like the first time they entered lay bear and i never did that because as i said i i didn't have access to it but i remember thinking ah oh, i wish i could do that i wish i could fix my eyebrows too and then they would go into school with like the blockiest eyebrows ever and slay for them good for them i love it for them and i tried to mimic that and i do think that friends are not always for you i know that now because i've seen photos of myself and i was like what was i doing with my eyebrows like they were really thick and i say that now because i know that you know makeup has changed and evolved and trends have evolved and now it's a little bit more i guess trendy to not have block dark eyebrows but i hope now i think i have a better idea of what suits me and what doesn't suit me there are definitely things that i used to like or used to wear and maybe they just didn't age well and it's okay like since it was it was probably okay at that time it probably looked good at that time but there's this beautiful thing about evolving especially with your looks or how you perceive yourself or how you present yourself it will always be progressing or evolving if you're the type of person who gives a shit about your looks or gives a shit about how you present yourself that's wonderful if you don't that's okay for me i think it's become more of like a process or an adventure or you know like a skill set like rather than something that should make me want to k-word myself <laughs> 
finding yourself or finding your way of styling yourself, presenting yourself is a process and it's never going to stay the same. Or maybe it could. Maybe you're like Dolly Parton and you just have it figured out and I'm like, that's just like, that's cool. I think we truly do feel the worst though when we compare ourselves to other people because comparing yourself to other people's beauty and what looks good on other people will 99% of the time not apply to you. Sometimes it does apply to you. Yes, sure, let's give it that. But if you think that this just this looks good on you or I should do this because other people are doing this or somebody who kind of looks at me looks like me looks better like this then decipher for yourself if that's really the case because if you look at people who have like these extravagant makeup like people like art school like people who do like Hong rock bullshit or like have red hair that are like a mohawk or something like they have never been happier and even if they cringe at that like 90 years from now or they stick by it it's so much much better because they know in themselves that it's what they like you know stick with what you like I think the only time I really hated myself or hated the way I look is when I feel like I was just not being true to myself and that's fine it's fine because I can look back and cringe and think okay I'm never gonna do that again but at the same time I remember when I was in grade school I was thinking I don't care how goddamn ugly I look in this graduation photo as long as I glow up in the future which is great now because I like to think I serve cunt now <laughs> <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say for now thank you guys so much for watching please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already this is a podcast hopefully you didn't watch this all throughout and just stared at me the whole time because that would be pretty awkward and probably pretty boring for you so i don't know how to do outros outro the wonderful beautiful podcast.